election delays? Huh? <laughs> like the old Tim the Toolman Taylor? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna find out what the hell's going on because it's not good. There is foosery going on, and I always say, uh, we called it. I hate to say it. I do, I do. We called it. And all the stuff is starting to come up, coming to fruition. October surprise, maybe. So we'll see if the foosery begins, but there's still foosery taking place. So Michigan SOS estimates state won't know election results until the end of Wednesday. Oh, oh, here we go again. So Michigan. So we just got to talk about Pennsylvania taking four days plus to uh, get the election results. Now Michigan's coming out. Gee, those those might just be both swing states. Oh, no, they are. Yep, they are. God. Hey, let's kind of wait 48 hours to see what's going on so we know how many votes we need to create. Michigan Democrat Senator of State Jocelyn Benson said on Sunday that her state likely won't know the results of the 2024 election until 24 hours after the polls close. Oh, oh. Mm, funny how that works out. Amazing. <laughs> Democrats can't even run elections and people think that they can run the country. The race between former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris in Michigan, uh, a vital battleground state, correct, remains a toss up. Well, not until they start, you know, uh, doing some little foosery woosery on this whole thing. Uh, here's some stuff from Face the Nation talking about this very thing that we're covering right here. Do you expect to get results? Well, you know, in 2020, we had the results of our highest turnout election in Michigan history within 24 hours of the polls closing. The unofficial results were completed by 8 p.m. on Wednesday. So we're tracking that again this year. We do have more options to process ballots sooner than Election Day, which is where we were restricted in 2020. So I'm optimistic we could see results even sooner, but I would estimate end of the day on Wednesday as the best guess on how we'll perform. But that said, uh, we will always prioritize accuracy and security over efficiency, understanding how much people will want those results. We're still going to make sure the process is secure and accurate before we uh, put anything out to the public. But that said, we understand people's energy and excitement, mm -hmm. and we'll be working hard to ensure those results are, are ready as soon as possible. I don't I don't trust this lady at all at all. Y'all remember this? Y'all Yeah, well, we don't trust the system. People think I'm joking when I say they're putting up poster boards. I wasn't joking. I was serious. Guys, I understand when I say things that comes out very satirical like a smart ass and, and jokingly and sometimes it is, but usually my jokes are just about the Democrats doing things. Y'all remember this? Yep. Yep. And by the way, uh, they're showing footage of voting machines. The uh, person that was leading the centers like right now are able to change the votes. I don't know if you guys were watching that footage, like just actively doing it and then printing out the ballot. So they were switching the vote on the machine and then printing out the full fledged ballot. So it's it's happening, man. It, it, it's happening. It's, it's, it's bad, folks. It's it's real bad. And I, I don't trust it. And that's sad because I want to be able to trust our elections. But both Republicans and Democrats didn't want to do anything about it. You want to know who wanted to do something about it was Ted Cruz on January 6th when he was standing on the Senate floor with the votes until, and this is where I think my conspiracy antennas are going through the roof, is because on January 6th, we know there was a, a couple, three-letter agencies that had boots on the ground that were enticing the crowd to go in. And um, so they go in and then all of a sudden uh, they got to take everybody off the Senate floor. Who was advocating for election integrity on the Senate floor and for them to do an investigation of basically a forensic audit on the 2020 election? Oh, that's right. Right when it happened was Ted Cruz. That's really weird, huh? Have you guys looked at, like and done a deep dive into January 6th? There's some weird stuff going on. The fact that Ted Cruz on the Senate floor to be able to give the government access to basically create a, a, almost like a commission and look into the election integrity and the, the the broken laws and all the stuff that went down in 2020 to actually see if the election should be certified. 
And then you also had people storming the Capitol just oddly enough, which is very rare. And then you had a pipe bomb outside the RNC and then a pipe bomb outside the, the, uh, the DNC area where Kamala Harris was at, like an assassination attempt, basically. And she's never acknowledged it because she wasn't even supposed to be there in the first place. Isn't that weird? Have you guys looked into all this? And then they find the pipe bombs within like 12 minutes of each other and don't say a word about it to anybody. There's video of it, by the way. There's full flown video like of street cameras and stuff like that. I find it a little odd. A little odd that you wanted to look under the hood and then all that takes place just oddly enough. Oddly enough. Uh, well, get ready for this because there's another caravan coming to the United States border and it's big and it's only getting bigger. 2,000 migrants headed to the United States border. And what happens is it's like a snowball. These people just roam and it just rotates and rotates and it starts off like this big. And by the time it gets to the border, it's just massive. And they'll all be let in. Oh, yeah. And, and you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if they get here by election day. Oh, you go. Okay, here's a ballot. You come in. Ballot, ballot, ballot. Pop, 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 pop. Just giving all ballots. A car That's a joke, by the way, partially. A caravan of roughly 2,000 migrants is headed to the United States border from the southern end of Mexico just weeks ahead of the presidential election. The caravan, which includes migrants from Venezuela, Haiti, Honduras, and even Africa, Oh, and they're left the city of Mexico's southern border with Guatemala on Sunday. Gotcha. Some migrants appear to be making the journey to the United States now out of concern that the Biden-Harris administration could be ousted. Quote, that is what makes us fearful, Venezuelan national said, referencing the possibility that a new administration could enact policies to stem the flow of migration to the United States. Uh, they say this could change because they could both close the CBP-1 appointment and all the services that are helping migrants. Oh, what, 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 what did that say, you guys? Helping services. Oh, because there's a safety net. That's right. It's not like what it used to be when my grandparents or other people immigrated here. My grandparents didn't immigrate here, but other people's grandparents did back in like the early uh, 1900s. And uh, no safety net. No safety net. News of the migrant caravan en route to the United States comes as immigration has become one of the most important issues. But legacy media won't cover this. You know what I mean? Why is there why is there not legacy media going down there with their cameras and uh, just tracking with their camera like the massive amount of people? Holy shit, there's so many of them. Oh, my God. Look at the thousands. Who's paying? By the way, who's funding all this? That's my question. Isn't it all your guys's question, too? You have thousands of people making this multi thousand mile journey. Who's funding their food and shelter and water and like who's doing is it? Is anybody else curious? Is anybody else curious? Because I am. I want to know who's funding this. Is it Soros? Is it the DNC? Is it nonprofits that are getting money from the DNC? I don't have answers for you, folks. I don't know. You also have the administration told everyone that these individuals coming over our border were being vetted. But here's the thing. Uh, not even close. They just lied to all of us. I mean, it's funny because they keep saying Donald Trump's a liar, but as some it's covered almost every single White House press briefing, I've listed not just Jen Psaki, not just Karine Jean-Pierre, not just Anthony Blinken or John Kirby or Jake Sullivan or Joe Biden or Kamala Harris. I see all this stuff every single day because I do it as my hobby, as something that's fun. Uh, they've done nothing but lie. I'm not saying there's not some truths in there, but the vast majority of what they've done is just completely gaslit the American public for the last four years. Remember that this administration told everyone that these individuals coming over our border were being vetted. That is the biggest joke because we have thousands of gang members that are taking over streets in our city. They've committed crimes, everything from murder to rape to countless number of robberies. Uh, and we need to get them deported. And I think the only person that's going to work with us to do that is President Trump. We need to stop the flow. It even right now, you see another caravan you know, coming to the borders, and this administration still does absolutely nothing. They can quickly undo their 60 executive orders if they cared. So people vote for Kamala Harris. They need to understand that they are voting for millions of more people to enter our country illegally, for thousands of more members of these gangs, criminals, uh, and, and people who are wreaking havoc in our cities. We need 
immigrants. We need immigrant workers. We need them to come here legally. And we have a long list of people. Maria, I have citizens that I represent whose relatives have been waiting patiently. They've done everything right. They follow our rules. They're getting pushed to the end of the line by this administration because they're prioritizing the Biden-Harris administration. The people have paid the drug cartels to enter our country. These individuals that you're seeing right now on your screen wreaking havoc on our streets ahead of the people who want to come here legally to work and contribute to our society. That is so wrong. And President Trump will fix it. Now, some of you might be saying, hey, why is nobody helping those police officers? Well, because these are illegal immigrants and people will sit there and stab you right in your chest, your head, your jugular or shoot you dead in the street uh, for stepping in. It's too risky and too costly for you to risk something like that to help your officer. I get it. But um, these people, if they don't care about breaking the law to come here illegally and sell fentanyl to your children, your children die, or just outright murdering or raping your children, they don't care two shits about your life as well. It's better to call the police, help these officers that way than it is to step in and uh, ultimately get your life taken. These people don't care. They weren't vetted. There's a bunch of liars in this administration. They will continue to lie. The Democrat Party is responsible for this problem, and the Democrats don't want to take responsibility for this problem. They would rather just blame Donald Trump for some ungodly reason, because, again, it's their problem. They created it.